In today's project, we're gonna take a console table that I built previously, and we're gonna put some cool legs on it. Hope you enjoy the process. Basically, I found an old drawer, like a, a drawer from a dresser. So this is actually what it looks like right here. And when I found it, it was actually on its side like this, and it had three shelves in it. So what I did is I cut off the ends and I kind of just made it a bit smaller. Uh, redid some joints, some nice dovetails on the sides. This is what the sides looked like, which are nice dovetails, but a lot of them were pretty rough and hard to repair. They had been uh, routered, they weren't hand done. And so I decided I'm gonna cut those off. And in one of the cases, there was this nice pink color on the face of the drawer. So I planed that off, took it down to the bare wood, redid the joints, and came up with something that I, I'm pretty happy with. The plan was to go to Amazon, order some hairpin legs, and I was gonna put those on, mount it in the front hallway, and we'd be done with that. But I got a message from Amazon saying that that package is not deliverable because it broke in transit. And my first thought was to say, well, maybe I can wait a while, reorder them. But then my second thought was to say, why don't I make some legs for this thing, just out of some of the wood I have laying around the house. So I want my console table to have a total height of 30 inches. As the box stands already, there's 14 inches there, so I need 16 more inches. But because the legs are gonna be on an angle, the pieces of wood will actually need to be longer than that. So to figure this length out, I'm gonna draw a grid that's eight inches by 16, put the wood at an angle, and measure just directly off this grid. So here I am cutting a piece of wood, giving myself a bit of extra room, and then planing it to see what is under it and I have some surprising results. You can kind of see though, it is just basically filled with these little tiny holes. And I'm not sure if this is disease, I'm not sure if this is bugs, but I didn't feel comfortable using it in the house. So if you know what it is in the comments, just leave a, a comment. Let me know if I should get rid of this stuff or do something else with it. So I decided to use different wood. We'll keep going with the same basic idea and just modify the wood that we're actually using. And so that's what we did. Here I grab another piece of wood, cutting it to rough size. Then I get it in the vise to rip cut it. Rip cutting through the whole thing, which took quite a while, but thanks to the magic of editing, there we go. And then I plane one side flat so I could use that to reference the marking gauge. And this is just to make sure I have consistent width for the both of these legs. So I'm marking them up and then I'll put them both in the vise to plane them down to their final size. And you can kind of go quick to begin with and then you really want to slow down as you get closer to that final dimension. And again, here I'm doing the, the next one, same thing, you can work pretty quickly and then once you get to the end, you really slow down to make sure you have the final dimension. Double checking and then just face planing to make sure all four sides are nice and smooth to eliminate the need for sanding later. And this is where that rectangle I drew on the table really comes in useful. I use that to put the wood right down and measure the exact angles that I would need to get the legs the right length. I'm not sure what this contraption is. I bought it from a friend. It didn't end up working the way I hoped for. And so I ended up just switching to a speed square and using this and just pivoting to get the correct angle. At least that was a plan. Here I am marking the angle, cutting it and getting through testing it and finding that it actually didn't read the right angle the first time. And so I ended up correcting that and just redoing the process of marking, getting a little knife wall and then cutting it down. And that time it worked and I was able to repeat the process on both of those legs. Now it was time to lay out the legs on top of each other so I can mark out where I would need to remove material. And to do this, I kind of line them up against that line using a block to help set kind of a wall for them to go up against. And then it was just a matter of using my knife to score lines on one of the pieces. And here I am measuring half the distance because I'm gonna take off the top half of the one, the bottom half of the other to join them together. And then it was just a matter of connecting those top lines to the depth line on the side and doing that with a square. Once everything was marked, I used my saw to cut down from those top lines to the depth line. And after that, it was just a matter of using chisels to remove all the waste.
And as soon as I cleared up the waist, I was able to take the other leg, slide it into that opening. From there, I stood everything up to make sure that the legs would stand flat on the floor. Then I set it down to mark out the space on the second leg where I would remove material so that I could repeat that process. And here again, I'm marking everything out. I'll again mark the depth line, the side lines, chisel out all the waist so that eventually I'll end up with two legs that look something like this. Now it's just a matter of gluing these legs together, just spreading a bit of wood glue into both sides of the joint, placing it together, throwing a clamp on there, and then just leaving it to dry overnight. We got the legs out of the vise. Pretty pleased with the results. I think the front looks pretty good. There's a few details on the back that I'm gonna have to, to work at. There was a little corner that chipped off while I was clearing out material. I was not being careful. I glued that back on. That's probably still gonna be noticeable, but I'm gonna to try to sand that down and hide it a little bit more. And either way, that's gonna be on the back side that's not visible to the people that are looking at this piece of furniture. So I'm not too concerned about that. This will be the top and this will attach to the base of the console table. And then you can see the bottom of the legs, we still have to cut those down to size, but I'm gonna do that later. I think these turned out as well as I could expect for a first time doing something like this. Let's go do the other ones and then we'll meet you back here. And just like that, we are done the second set of legs. We've got two of these legs ready to go. We cut the top and the bottom. So now they should be able to sit flat on the base of the console table and also sit flat on the floor. We had to replace the original wood we were gonna use and this is not as robust, but one of the things I think it does give is kind of a sleek look to it. So I'm excited about that. But the question is how do we mount this to the bottom of the console table in a way that's gonna be secure and not really wobbly. And the best I've come up with so far is to actually notch out a groove in the bottom of the console table so that these legs can sit right in that groove and give it a bit more stability so it's not rocking all over the place. So we got two sets of legs. We're gonna attach them to the console table. We'll see you guys in just a second. I want the legs to be about four inches from the edge. So I am right now measuring that and marking it off with a knife. I don't actually want the groove to go all the way across, but just be in the places where the legs are gonna be sitting. So that's where I'm marking right now. And then taking a chisel, I'll make a bit of a knife wall so I can actually place the leg right on that knife wall and get an accurate mark on the other side to ensure a very tight fit. Once I do that, it's another knife wall up against that mark. And then it's a matter of marking the depth. Again, wanting to make sure I get a consistent depth so that all the legs are even. And then I connect the depth line to the line on the top. And then it's a matter of beginning to saw first down to the line and then these short strokes to make sure I can clear out as much waste as possible. And once I've cleared out that waste, then the wood really begins to chip up nicely when you use a chisel. I used a chisel to get most of the waste out and then came in with a small router plane to even out the bottom. And then basically once I was done, I repeated the process on the other three. So we got the grooves all done and the top of the console table. Now we're just ready to slide the legs in and I fit them off camera just to make sure they were nice and snug. Did a bit of planing with them and, and they fit really nicely into the grooves and they're, they're fairly tight in there. You can kind of lift it up even just with the joint, which is always a good sign. I'm going to go ahead and throw some glue in here. And then we're gonna give it a stain, just a, a nice light stain, and then we'll see what it looks like once it's all set up. But that's kind of what we're going with here. I give the legs a very light sanding before getting ready to glue them in place. And just like before, we throw in some glue and then we spread it around a little bit with a little spreader and then place the legs in on top. I measure the distance between the legs, check for square, and finish off by giving them a stain to add a little bit of color. And with that, we are pretty much done.
Here's the final product, fairly happy with the results. It was definitely a huge learning experience and I just had a lot of fun putting this together. Hope you had fun watching the build. Well, until next time, see you later.